Jamie Dimon is in front of a Senate banking hearing committee, committee hearing, I should say, uh, testifying. And um, just uh, obviously it's happening as we speak. I've been listening to it. Uh, but a couple of things to keep in mind as you uh, read about uh, or have listened to the hearing J.P. Morgan Banking Committee Chairman uh, Tim Johnson, uh, excuse me, the banking, (laughs) the banking committee, it's not branded by J.P. Morgan at this point, but the uh, banking committee chairman, uh, Tim Johnson, uh, he receives his second largest contributions over the last two plus uh, decades from J.P. Morgan. This is according to the Center for Responsive Politics which analyzes campaign giving from companies, employees, and their political action committees since 1989. For the top Republican Senator Richard Shelby, J.P. Morgan, also his second largest contributor. The same for the second-ranking Democrat, Senator Jack Reed. The committee's number two Republican, this is uh, via Naked Capitalism, Committee's number two Republican, Senator Mike Crapo, and its third-ranking Democrat, Senator Charles Schumer, are not far behind their colleagues with J.P. Morgan ranking third and fourth, respectively, among their contributors. So uh, it should not surprise you to hear the most pointed questions from people like Sherrod Brown and Senator Jeff Merkley. Jeff Merkley, we interviewed uh, last week on this program. Sherrod Brown, uh, also interviewed last week, will play that interview in the coming days as well. Uh, Just uh, to keep in mind, meanwhile, Bernie Sanders released a GAO report, which was required via the Dodd-Frank legislation to study the conflict of interest amongst those who sit on the Federal Reserve and the banks that the Federal Reserve is supposed to uh, regulate in terms of uh, maintaining uh, the soundness of uh, these banks. And the GAO, according to uh, George Zornick in The Nation, laid out several conflicts of interest, but, of course, was not required to uh, name specific institutions. However, Sanders uh, released that today. He found that during the crisis, $4 trillion in zero-interest Federal Reserve loans went to the banks of at least 18 current and former Federal Reserve regional bank directors. Now, you understand that when you get money loaned at 0% interest, you're getting free money. I guarantee you, if people loaned me money at 0% interest and said, pay me back essentially when you can, I would make money. I could either just Maybe uh, because I'm not an institution, I would probably have access only to uh, short-term CDs that may pay me 1% interest. But if you loan me enough money, folks, you don't have to loan me $4 trillion. Loan me a billion, and I will make a ton of cash. In fact, loan me a million, and I will still do okay. And uh, contrary to what, uh, uh, when uh, Senator Merkley was questioning Jamie Dimon, Jamie Dimon seemed to get very upset. And, uh, but as far as I can tell, Jamie Dimon tried to be open kimono, a <laughs> term he keeps using. And uh, apparently, I, I, apparently, I'm the only one who finds that sort of, like, creepy. But um, be that as it may, J.P. Morgan, 
uh, received $390 billion, b- b- billion in emergency funds while it was being used as a clearinghouse for emergency lending programs. It got $29 billion, this is all from the Fed, to acquire Bear Stearns and got 18-month exemption from risk-based leveraging capital requirements. J.P. Morgan also got the Fed to take risky assets off the Bear Stearns balance sheet before it was acquired. J.P. Morgan, of course, sits on the uh, New York Fed. Among the other conflicts revealed by Bernie Sanders' report, Jeffrey Immel, the CEO of General Electric, and I don't know, is this guy still sitting on uh, President Obama's jobs, jobs committee or whatever it was? CEO of General Electric served on the New York Fed's board of directors from 06 to 11. General Electric received $16 billion in low-interest financing from the Federal Reserve's commercial paper funding facility during this time period. In 2008, the New York Fed approved an application from Goldman Sachs to become a bank holding company, giving it access to cheap Fed loans. During the same period, Stephen Friedman... Chairman of the New York Fed sat on the Goldman Sachs Board of Directors and owned Goldman stock, something that the Fed's rules prohibited. He received a waiver in 2008 that no one knew about. One might call it a secret waiver. And after he received the waiver, he continued to purchase stock in Goldman Sachs from November 2008 through January of 2009. Unbeknownst to the Fed, this is according to the GAO report. Yeah, he had a waiver. So it wasn't, he wasn't just getting a waiver sort of retroactively. He was getting a waiver and then took advantage of that going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, that's called business. Sanford Weil, the former CEO of Citigroup, served on the Fed's board of directors in New York in 2006. During the financial crisis, Citigroup received over $2.5 trillion in total financial assistance from the Fed. James Wells, chairman and CEO of SunTrust Banks, served on the board of directors of the Federal Reserve Bank at Atlanta since 2008 until currently. During the uh, financial crisis, SunTrust received $7.5 billion. James Rohr, the chairman and CEO of PNC Financial Services Group, served on the Fed's board of directors in Cleveland from 2008 to 2010. PNC received $6.5 billion in low-interest loans from the Federal Reserve during the financial crisis. So uh, just some fun facts to enjoy when you uh, read or watch the testimony of Jamie Dimon in front of the uh, Senate Banking Committee.